My skill of trade has always been engineering, but lately I found myself diversifying and working on large multidisciplinary projects. The skills I have acquired as an engineer are no longer satisfying my need. So I'm looking for many alternative methods to help me, which is what I'm going to talk with you about tonight, visionary mnemonics. People said there are no more geniuses like Newton, Maxwell in this era. We don't have big discoveries like the golden era of science. This is not true. We are in a different environment now. There is rarely going to be one single person sitting in a lab conducting experiments. Our research has become more and more sophisticated. The scope of the project is becoming much larger. We are working on larger projects, needs larger facilities, larger funding. There are still a lot of geniuses working within these groups, but the research has become a collective effort to discover. Some of the examples from recent years was the Large Hadron Collider and Mars Curiosity Rover, physicists, mathematicians, engineers in different fields, geologists, chemists, biologists, all came together to work on a massive project to achieve a single common goal. While the research we do here may not be as large scale as this example, but the multidisciplinary complexity exists. These kind of large scale cross-disciplinary projects have become more and more common in our research. Imagine you are working on a project that involves five different groups of talented people in completely different fields of research. And they are tied together because of one mutual interest. As the principal investigator, your task is to envision the goal and to direct and distribute the tasks to the team accordingly to their abilities. Typically, you will try to fit the whole research project, the whole problem space into your head. It may take a little time to do, but it can be done. Once the project is inside your head, you can navigate, you can search, you can explore, draw more ties, and solve potential issues. You can come up with solutions quicker if problems arise, because within your head, you are the architect of the project. Now what if you are working with two of these projects, maybe three, four, how about 10? How many of these kind of large projects can you work with simultaneously? Can you instantaneously recall what research group works on what? Or can you see the possible links between these projects? Now, Take one step further out of your comfort zone and work or collaborate in a field or fields that you don't have in-depth knowledge about. You find it more often asking yourself, what is this project again? I, I know, I have. You feel like you are traveling to the same places over and over again, but you remember very little about the place. Now we know that our brain associates images better with, than words. That's why we have developed and used all kinds of techniques to visualize our research, our data, and our analysis. We have decision trees, diagrams, flowcharts, blueprints, schematics to give us visual aid, the otherwise wall of text descriptions and equations. We build figures and diagrams because it helps visualizing and navigating the problem space looking for solutions. We have many techniques that are oriented towards problem solving. Often enough, these techniques contain a bit too much detail and branches to be useful as a memory recalling devices. Your brain will get distracted about specific problems and you will lose the train of thought. What we need is a simple and graphically rich figure such that it is easy to trace the trails of the thought process. The goal here is to associate each of these projects to a mind map. This is a tool I use frequently for my projects. It helps building framework and structure relationship. If I look at the name of the project, I can see the road map of that project. I can trace back all the components in my head. It's like driving on a familiar road. You know exactly what happens after this corner. The mind map emphasizes the use of graphical connections to build relationships within different components. You may think, hey, this sounds like some other organization mapping system. This is partially true. What mind map differs itself is the heavy use of visual mnemonics. 
You start out with the core concept of the project in the center. Use colors, symbols, pictures, or even layering dimensions to build the branch. You don't need to put all the details about the project in your map, but keywords that can stimulate and associate with your problems. If you look at some of these examples, it may be true that some of these look like children doodles. However, because the figure is very visually stimulating, your brain can actually remember this much better than your stack of projects, proposals, and abstracts on a black and white text. My team is currently working on 15 different projects and 11 proposals, projects with multiple collaborations with different departments, colleges, universities, industrial partners. This technique helps me to create crystal clear mental image about the scope and framework of these projects. This is the key to be successful in this current research era as we are beginning to discover the need for expertise in many different disciplines and that we begin to deal with projects with increasing complexity and we will need the tool that enable us to become master of all trades. I hope this uh, gives you idea of applying visual mnemonics into research setting. I would like all of you to give it a try and test it in your own. Thank you.